Okay, in this section, we are going to be looking at the geological time scale because Earth has a history, and actually a very, very long history. The time span that Earth has been around, that's about four to six million years ago from the time it finally formed to now, is too long for any living memory to actually remember. The ages are extremely old. So, scientists have divided this long period of time into subsections, into subunits, to form what we call a geological time scale, which is some sort of calendar that tells us the different types of events that have been occurring in Earth's history, as we'll be seeing in the following slides. So, they do that by dating fossils and the rocks that actually surround these fossils. That's what paleontologists do. They form some kind of calendar. And the geological time scale is then divided into short units, about four of them. And these units are in descending order from the biggest to the smallest. There are one, two, three, four. We have the aeons. The aeons are about billions of years. It means the Earth has aeons of ages, four to six billion years. Aeons are subdivided into eras, which of course are shorter periods than eras. And eras are also subdivided into periods or time periods, which are also shorter than eras. And periods are also subdivided into epochs, which are shorter than periods. So the biggest one is the aeon, followed by the era, followed by the periods, and we have the epochs. So here we have some terminology. The geological time scale, the time scale that is used to trace the history of life and the subdivisions of this, this uh, the use are here the aeons the units are here the aeons very long periods of time billions of years like i mentioned earlier eras subdivisions of aeons time period subdivisions of eras epochs subdivisions of time periods the precambrian time time before we had more or less any life forms we'll look at the cambrian period or the cambrian explosion in another slide now here we have a figure here we have a figure that shows us the aeons era period epochs of the earth there are two aeons. We have the Precambrian Aeon and we have the Phanerozoic Aeon. The Precambrian Aeon is divided into two era. We have them down here. Two era. We have the Archean Era, which is ancient times. We'll see that. Then we have the Proterozoic Era, which is a bit more recent than the Archean time. And it's followed the Precambrian Aeon, is followed by the Phanerozoic Aeon. The Phanerozoic Aeon is divided into three eras that we have here. Now, these are the three eras that we are going to consider mostly in this section in our curriculum the other two eras are not much important for our studies our studies will more mainly focus on these three eras here the paleozoic era the mesozoic era the kernel the cenozoic era please remember all these names you don't necessarily need to know them okay but just for study's sake we want to look at this as division so that we can understand the flow of information now this eras are subdivided into periods here they've been summarized for example for the precambrian or the archean era we have just the late and middle period for the proterozoic era 
we have the early, the middle, and the late. That's how they've just so it's been summarized. Then the Paleozoic era, we have the Cambrian era. We'll look at the Cambrian explosion at the later stage to see what it means. And those are the, all the subdivisions of this era. Same with the Mesozoic and our fam famous Jurassic. I'm sure you've watched the, music, the, the movie Jurassic Park. The ones for, not the ones for Nigerians, of course. Okay, our famous Jurassic period is found in the Mesozoic era. Here also, we'll look mostly at the Quaternary period of the Cenozoic era. The Cenozoic era is recent times. The Quaternary period is the period where we find the Holocene epoch. The Holocene epoch is the time in which we live. So this is just about 0,01 million years ago. That's when the Holocene epoch started till recent time. That's we still living in the Holocene epoch. So those are the things that we'll mostly be looking at. We'll just be concerned with one, two, three eras. We'll also be concerned with the Cambrian explosion. We'll be concerned with the Quaternary period and the Holocene area. Uh, the Holocene Epoch. That's mostly what will be our center of concern. Okay, this is another picture or figure that shows the different periods, the eras, we've taken out the eons. We're no longer looking at the eons here. Taking out the eons. It shows us simply the eras and the periods. And we've added something here. This is what happens at each period. The major events that could have taken place at each period. I'll just mention a few here. For example, we have here the Proterozoic era where we first found the first skeletons of soft-bodied metazoans, traces of animals. That's when we started having animals. Then we have the Cambrian period, where the fishes started to appear. If you look here, we have the Triassic period, where dinosaurs and other mammals started to arise. Then we have the Jurassic period, where we have birds also coming in and more dinosaurs appearing. Then we have the Quaternary period, where we have humans actually also arising after the Tertiary period, where we have more mammal species evolving. So you have this also in the form of a picture. I'm going to send it through. Then you can look at other events that occurred. I've just highlighted the major ones where our center of attention is. Okay. The geological time scale. What does it mean? Remember, okay, this is just about the history of life taking place millions of years ago so that's what scientists have done i think i've mentioned all of this already before they've just divided all these periods into sub units the eons eras period and epochs okay so these are the three main eras i was talking about the three main eras that will be centered uh, will, will center all our attention on the paleozoic era the mesozoic era and the Cenozoic era. Okay, all of this happened or goes back about 543 million years ago. And these eras, like I said, are divided into about 13 time periods. For example, we had the Triassic where the dinosaurs started appearing, then the Jurassic where we had more dinosaurs and even birds appearing, and we have the Neogen. The Cenozoic time period is divided into small time periods called epochs. For example, we had our, our Holocene epoch where humans actually started evolving. Okay, And the period before the Cambrian period, just by what it means here, pre, pre means before, 
So the Precambrian period is what comes before the Cambrian, Cambrian period. Okay, you can do this exercise at your own time. We'll just move forward from there. Just on the next page. Okay. Scientists believe that the Earth began about four to six million years ago. I think that's what I've been saying all along. The Earth came in as a huge ball of fire, like a meteorite that was shot out into space. After, if you study the Big Bang theory, where the whole galaxy was formed, there were so many meteorites that were shot into space. The Earth was just like one of such meteorites, a huge ball of fire, otherwise a molten rock of lava. And it had a lot of burning gases on it. And when it cooled down, the gases were released from the earth from the inside, from the core of the earth. The gases included hydrogen, methane, ammonia, nitrogen. Water vapor was present, but notice that there was no oxygen. We've not mentioned oxygen here, you remember. Because many scientists believed that there was no oxygen at the beginning of time. Though some scientists, few scientists believed that there was some amount of oxygen present. Okay, so these, the atmosphere at that time was composed of only those gases that we've mentioned before. Like I was saying, that notice among those gases, there was no oxygen. Okay, so that's what I was saying. Some scientists believe that there were small quantities of oxygen that were present in the atmosphere. This is the work that some scientists like uh, Oparin and the English scientist Haldane put forward, put forward the hypothesis that began in, 19, in the 1920s. They hypothesized that UV light and lightning changed the gases into organic molecules. And that's what many people still believe to present time. And somehow it's kind of related with what we experience in many human, in many living beings or animals, or organisms, there is some small amount of electricity that always flows around our body. So these scientists believe that either UV light or lightning sparked off the formation of organic molecules, which paved the way for the formation or for the creation of life forms. Okay. The organic molecules that were found, that were found at that time due to the radiation and the lightning were proteins and fatty acids. And if we remember the membranes of cells are usually made up of two layers of proteins or and a layer of fat. So proteins and fatty acids could easily combine to form cellular membranes that could and close the contents of a cell, hence forming cells. When we look at fossil records, there's evidence that cells existed about 3.4 billion years ago. It means just about 600 million years after Earth was actually formed. Okay. Now, there is no evidence, fossil evidence cannot easily show us or prove to us that the or proved to us or showed to us how these cells formed or that the cells formed because of gases and liquids 